So when we hear the word tramp, or maybe hobo, we often think of these terms as interchangeable. The term tramp is an Americanized version of a slang term for tramping about. And this was a term used in England for soldiers who were no longer serving, who were just moving about the land. It became a derogatory term in America after the Civil War when there were many veterans that had nowhere to live and they just wandered through the country, usually trying to take up work wherever they could. The word hobo has a very different origin and they were very different meanings back in the day. A tramp was someone who was meandering about, not really looking for work. A hobo was someone who traveled the country, usually on a train without a ticket, and would take up work in a location where they landed. It's a bastardization of a railroad greeting that was meant to convey, well, hello there, sir. But the words they used were ho, bo, B-E-A-U, and it got condensed to hobo. Now, Jake Bird was born in Louisiana in 1901, and he found himself at the age of 24 riding the rails where he spent the majority of his life. He was on a train with fellow travelers Gordon Geiger and James Burwald, riding atop a rail car. It made a stop in Ashland, Nebraska, and they were surprised, as was the security guard who climbed atop the car and found them there. A tussle ensued. All three of the gentlemen took many blows from the security man, and one of them, Gordon Geiger, fell between the train cars. He was unable to right himself before the train moved, and unfortunately he was crushed below the train. So Jake went on to Omaha where he found work, and he did testify during the trial of his friend in April 1928. In November of that same year, East Omaha was the scene of multiple axe murders. It started in November on the 18th. J.W. Blackman was found bloody in his bed, a dirty ax left in the wood pile outside of his home. On the next day, November 19th, Waldo Resso and his wife were both bludgeoned to death in their beds. The police found Mrs. Resso's sister in her bed, also bludgeoned to death. Her two children, who were nine months old and three years old were in the crib next to her alive. And the papers reported that the baby had a blood smeared handprint across his face, though he was unharmed. So on Tuesday, November 20th, after bludgeoning Harold Stribling, he turned his ax on his wife, Frida, fracturing her nose and she begged for the life of her child. They had a son, who at that time was 16 months old. The assailant said that he would spare the life of the babe if she would agree to leave the house with him. So in the early hours of the morning, without any shoes, without any coat, Frida Stribling for the life of her child left her home, walked through the snow into the swamps of the Missouri River where her assailant set her free without taking her life. She was shocked and amazed to find that her husband was still alive and being treated at the Lord Lister Hospital. The police brought their suspect, who they believed to be the chopper, which was the name the local newspapers gave to the serial killer who was terrorizing Omaha. And they brought that man into the hospital and asked Mrs. Stribling to identify him. It is said that she took one look at the man and said, that is him, take him away. However, later, Frida gave an interview and she said they did come to the hospital, but she was not in any state to identify an assailant. She never looked at the man and she never claimed that they had the right person. That person was Jake Bird. Jake was found guilty of all of the murders in uh, East Omaha at that time and he eventually went to prison for his crimes. Frida and Harold 
didn't have a very quiet life after that. They did eventually remove to California where Frida made a call to 911. She said, I have a horrible headache that I just can't get rid of and my husband is sleeping and I cannot rouse him. When the police arrived, they found that Frida had been shot in the head. Harold had also been shot in the head, presumably by himself. It is believed that he first shot Frida and then turned the gun on himself. The family members believe that that was a direct result of the trauma that they suffered in Omaha in 1928.